there, Internet? I'm Funky Monkey with another untold tale from the Marvelous Legends. And after last time when we travelled the stars in Thor Ragnarok, I'm not quite ready to return to Earth just yet. And neither is the arguable main protagonist of today's untold tale. Released in 2014, Guardians of the Galaxy introduces us to the titular team of less-than-stellar interstellar adventurers. An outlaw steals a precious gem, not realising that he's holding an actual Infinity Stone, and now he's got to keep it from Ronan the Accuser, a renegade Kree warlord. Ostensibly a vehicle to introduce the Power Stone, Guardians Volume 1 is Marvel's first true foray beyond the confines of the Earth, and an introduction to a larger universe. So slap a mixtape into your personal stereo and follow me to the stars once more as we prepare to meet... The Guardians of the Galaxy. It's 1988, and Meredith Quill is about to breathe her last. Brain cancer. Often the cruelest of inoperable tumours, and in 1988, a literal death sentence. Which is all the crueler on those left behind. <laughs> what a way to start a movie. This particular tumour isn't all that random or natural. But we'll get to that next time. She's got a little something for her son to remember her by. And as if that wasn't enough for young Peter, he's suddenly abducted by genuine aliens. Cut to 26 years later, and an adult Peter Quill lands on the abandoned world of Morag all of which is intercut with the opening titles, so I've opted to use stills instead. Hey, I've got to look professional, you know? And uses a couple of very clever gadgets to claim his prize. And get the better of some angry lackeys. These are Kree, a generally disagreeable bunch, and this particular set are working for a renegade warlord, and while his getaway is shambolic at best, it is at least successful. Negotiations with his boss, though, not so much. Yondu Udonta, that stole young Peter from the Earth, and then decided to keep him, for whatever reason. Not that he'd ever admit it, being a rough, tough ravager. We're introduced to our villain, Ronan the Accuser. Embodiment of everything terrible about Cree expansionism and zealotry, and he's not too happy that the Cree have signed a peace treaty with Xandar, and so Peter Quill heads to Xandar to meet his contact and get his reward. Which goes immediately south, on mention of Ronan's name. And for his attitude, Quill's gotten a small bounty on his head. Which causes a three-way scuffle between him, Rocket, and Gamora, daughter of Thanos. But you don't just start a fight on Xandar, capital and homeworld of the Nova Corps. And so our quartet are shipped off to the kiln a high-security prison, where Gamora's reputation precedes her. When you're a foundling of Thanos, you tend to accumulate red in your ledger. And we meet Drax, who isn't too fond of Ronan the Accuser. It turns out that when you kill someone's wife and child and then laugh right in front of them, it doesn't tend to endear them to you. But Star-Lord just happens to be around to be the voice of reason. With a truce agreed, our heroes make their escape from the kiln, and head for nowhere, and meet the Collector, that would buy the orb for a substantial amount. Yes, this orb contains the Infinity Stone of Power, overflowing with energy, and very dangerous. But oh dear. Oh! Not the end I'd wish for. And worse, a drunken Drax has called out Ronan for a final battle, which goes about as well as you'd expect, and leaves Ronan in control of the stone, and Star-Lord in the hands of the Ravagers. But Star-Lord proposes one last job to Yondu, and the stage is set for our finale, a massive set-piece battle in the skies above Xandar. While on board Ronan's ship, our heroes head out to put paid. But an Infinity Stone is not so easily undone. Enter Rocket to incapacitate Ronan, and exit Groot 
who sacrifices himself to protect his friends in the crash. And Star-Lord attempts a dancing distraction to keep Ronan from destroying Xandar, which shockingly works, at least long enough to deal with Ronan, and contain the stone. And so our movie ends with the Guardian's records expunged, as Peter Quill finally opens his mother's last gift. And even Groot's somewhat okay. So that was Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1. A tale that I think is definitely worth telling. If anything, the Power Stone is the least interesting thing about this movie. A space adventure of not entirely good guys, classically bad bad guys, losing family and finding it once again. And it doesn't hurt that the performances are suitably subtle, at least in the cases of Chris Pratt's Peter Star-Lord Quill and Zoe Saldana's Gamora. Not that you could fault Dave Bautista as the literal-minded Drax, as his relative freshness informs the wide-eyed yet still incredibly dangerous enforcer of the team. And we have to mention the bodily performances of Rocket and Groot, namely Sean Gunn and Christian Godlewski respectively, even as the voices of Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper take the lion's share of the glory. Whereas Karen Gillan's Nebula is smouldering rage and cold aloofness in my eyes here, the flow of the movie, aside from the odd flick across to the villains, is pretty straightforward, as a bunch of misfits and lost souls bond together not just for money, but to save the galaxy, or at least Xandar, from the threat of a lunatic with a grudge. So is it a perfect movie? Quite possibly. Out of the many MCU movies, excluding maybe Avengers Assemble, this is the movie that I've watched more than once, and that I'd come back to more than once. It's got so much. Space, lovable rogues, heart, vengeance, soul, obsession, and comedy. This is, in places, a very funny movie in a more subtle manner than the slapstick approach of Thor Ragnarok. But if I had to pick a flaw with a gun to my head, I did feel that Lee Pace as Ronan the Accuser was rather one note. But then, I suppose that the villain shouldn't outshine the heroes. Apart from that though, I'd say that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 is the mightiest Marvel movie of them all. And we didn't even mention the soundtrack. But what's to say? It's an awesome mix. Anyway, I've been Funky Monkey, and the journey continues next time as we go straight to Volume 2 and discover the identity of Peter Quill's father. See you there!